on the channel. It's the end of 2022, and we got a lot of best of lists, but you can't have the best without some of the worst. And today, we're counting down the biggest disappointments of 2022 in wrestling figures. The spirit of the will run here and welcome back to the channel for another edition of the Kyle Peterson Top 5 list. Top 5's Top 10's a Thursday tradition here on the channel for well over a year at this point and every single Thursday we're doing a countdown of some kind and we're at the end of 2022 as I am filming this and we got a ton, I mean a ton of best ofs, best of Top 5, Top 10's to finish out the year into January probably as well uh, but you can't do the best without a little bit of the worst and as you guys know I'm pretty positive. I'm a positive guy it's better to live your life positive uh, but there is some things that you know get deep in my craw all oh, the craw it gets in there and uh, we do have a little top five a negative one today and today we're talking about the top five wrestling figure disappointments of 2022 what disappointed me about wrestling figures and wrestling figure toy lines in general in 2022 there was so much good stuff it really we're living in a golden era if a little young Kyle was alive in this era today I don't know what I would do my brain probably would have exploded now you can watch wrestling 24 7 with the power of the internet the peacock streaming WWE networks everything else in between there is tons and tons of wrestling toy lines so many that a kid couldn't collect them all I don't know what I would have done as a little kid with my mentality the way I was doing things the way I would uh, consume my wrestling media I mean if wrestling was on I was in front of the TV I don't know what I would do I don't know I'd play video games wrestling I'd probably have four TVs going uh, it would just be a total anarchy. So we are truly living in a golden age, but there are some things that disappoint me, uh, and there's some things that I'm sure that disappoint you. And as usual, make sure you put your list together. Put it in the comments down below. Of course, we're going to start at number five. Work our way to number one. Uh, and what is, what is your biggest wrestling figure disappointment of 2022? And you got to put it in order, as I always say. So without further ado, let's kick it off at number five. All right, we're kicking the list off at number five with my fifth biggest wrestling figure disappointment of 2022. And this one goes to the canceled figure variety. This one goes to Mattel. This one goes to the WWE Elite line. What am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about that Chief. That old Chief J Strongbow, of course, Chief J. Strongbow is supposed to be a collector's edition in 2022, and at the last minute, we're talking very last minute, this figure was canceled. Oh, the dreaded cancelization. Uh, now, I'm not going to proclaim, I am not going to say at all that I am a huge Chief J. Strongbow fan. I mean, I've definitely seen his matches. I know who he is. I would definitely pick up the figure. I love legends. I love deep cuts like that, because let's be honest, he is a deep cut in 2022, uh, but I would never proclaim that oh, I'm the biggest Chief J. Strongbow fan of all time. So when it got canceled, it was definitely disappointing uh, for me because it was a character I wanted. It was a character I'd heard of. But it's funny how you see some people online, oh, he was my favorite wrestler. It's like, I don't know anybody in this day and age outside of friends and family that he was their favorite wrestler. But there's always people that claim that. It's the biggest travesty ever that we didn't get that figure. But we do know this figure was canceled because he was an Italian guy. He was actually not a chief. And uh, from one of the viewers, could have been you, uh, there was like a historical Native American studies teacher. Apparently his headdress is extremely sacred and nobody but the ch real actual chief can be wearing that headdress. So it was really disrespectful to Native Americans and so forth. So I I totally do understand it, uh, but at the same time, I would have liked to see it released. I mean, the society we are in is getting so PC, where I don't know if it's going to ruin anybody's really day if this Chief J Strongbow came out, especially at a collector's edition. I, I got to think a lot of people wouldn't even know it existed, but you know how it goes, and that's just the way life goes from time to time. We'll have some more of that probably in this very list. But Chief J Strongbow got canceled. However, he did release out to the public. I know there was a place in Pennsylvania, some kind of third-party store that got a bunch of these and were selling them on like Facebook Marketplace for like $12 or $20, bucks, something really, really cheap. Uh, they sold out really quick. Of course, we saw some come from overseas. Uh, and some of the overseas, I think Australia got a lot of these. And of course, usual China and stuff like that. We are still seeing loose ones out of the factory, some factory ones still coming out. And it's just absolutely ridiculous. Now, I would still like to get one of these for my collection. I would pick one up, but I'm not paying $500, $800, $1,000 
for a Chief J Strongbow. That's just not going to happen. Uh, if this was an Ultimate Warrior that got canceled, I would probably pony up 800 bucks for it. But Chief J Strongbow, not going to happen. He doesn't count as part of the Elite line because he was officially canceled. It's not a true figure. He was canceled. But yes, like I said, I would pick him up if I had an opportunity at a good price, a really good price. Uh, but it is just disappointing any time a figure gets canceled. When they show it to you, you get, I don't know, your hopes up. Uh, like Once again, I don't know if I got my hopes up too high, but at least it was shown to us. We knew it was coming out. To get the rug pulled out from under us is just never fun. And that's what we got here with Chief J Strongbow. And that's why he is the fifth disappointment of 2022. All right, we continue on, and we're at number four in my top disappointments of 2022 in the wrestling figure world landscape. And number four comes to something we've talked about a lot in our weekly toy news video. If you're not checking out the toy news videos every single Saturday, what are you doing? What are we doing? Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Check out those videos as we uncover and discuss all the toy news of the week every single Saturday right here on the channel. Uh, but one thing we've talked about a lot in the last few weeks is wrestling figure companies, and I should say the wrestling figure companies that aren't AEW, that aren't WWE, that aren't Mattel, that aren't Jazzwares. We're talking retro lines really specifically here. And one thing we've seen the rise of in 2022 and even a little bit of 2021 is the rise of wrestling figure artwork and this has been much discussed like I said here on the channel the last few months uh, but we see tons and tons of announcements now Chella, Zombie Sailor, Rush Collectibles, now Hastel Toys getting in the mix. Can't blame Hastel yet. He's just begun, uh, but he's got to show us some product ASAP or he's going to be really lumped in with some of these other companies. But though Chella, I always say, is the worst offender, Zombie's pretty bad, and Rush Collectible's pretty bad as well, is showing artwork for figures. Look who's coming. Al Snow's coming. Luna Vachon's coming. Uh, the Road Warriors are coming. All these different characters. I mean, almost to 100 different characters, probably over 100 between all these companies shown with artwork over the last year or so with nothing in hand. Rush Collectible still has not delivered any figures. It's been a while since Cello's come out with really anything. We do know they've kind of went under. Wrestling Traders taken them over, so there's a little bit of hiccup in that whole scenario. Hastel Toys has not put anything out yet, and now Zombie Sailor did put out the first series finally, but you know he announced like 50 other figures, and it has been a slow, slow burn. Uh, we're still waiting on Dan Housen, still waiting on Jeff Jarrett, well over a year wait on those guys. Series 2 did just go up for pre-order. Hopefully early spring we have those, but at this point, track record for not just Zombie, but a lot of these companies, we probably shouldn't hold our breath. But we're, we're getting a little bit fleeced here. It's like, are we an artwork company just showing action figure artwork, or are we actually going to see some figures? So that's hopefully for me, something that changes in 2023 that these companies, they hold back. I know it's exciting to announce something. Oh, I signed the LOD. I signed the Road Warriors. We're going to have figures of them in my line. That's great. I want to tell the world. I want to scream from the rooftops. Uh, hold back. Hold back five months. Let's wait a little bit. Until you're really ready to go, obviously you got to do pre-orders. You got to do that kind of stuff. But let's wait on the artwork as long as we can. Let's wait as long as we possibly can to shrink that distance down because all you're doing is upsetting customers and it's become a joke at this point, unfortunately. Now, I'm for a lot of these. I'm going to pick up a ton of these. All these companies I mentioned, I'll be picking up their figures for sure. I'd love to be a completionist on all these figures. I would do that in a heartbeat. But it is annoying, it is weird, it is strange, and we don't see out of the wrestling arena, we don't see any other toy companies doing this, just showing artwork and artwork and artwork without proof positive figures in our hands. So very, very strange, very disappointing. Why it makes number four on my countdown. All right, we're at the halfway point. Make sure you put your list in the comments down below. Don't forget to put them in order. That is the challenge, that is the fun part. But now we're at number three, and number three and number four kind of go together. Number four was more about the artwork. We're showing all this artwork, but where's the figures? Where's the figures? Well, number three is about the figures. Once again, where are the figures? Long wait times, long pre-orders taking forever. Now, all companies are pretty guilty of this. Outside of Mattel, Mattel is the one that really has their hands the cleanest on this because guess what? That new generation arena, they told us it would be a year. Uh, they told us on a lot of these things how long they take. So Mattel's pretty consistent here, but some of them, even Jazzwares, Jazzwares, let's talk about recently the GameStop exclusive Kenny Omega Young Bucks. It's been about a year since we pre-ordered those. It might even be over a year at this point. Some of the weird things with that, that is a little strange. It's like, what is going on here? What is up with the distribution? Uh, even some of their chases, that Jake Hager chase, for instance, uh, that didn't really get out into the public. There's supposed to be thousands of those. 
Where are they? So some long waits, Mattel, Jazzwares, they're not guilty of this. But the guiltiest offenders, once again, going back to those retro companies, Cella Toys for sure. Uh, where is some of this stuff? We order some of these, that Uncensored Dynamite Kid. I think it's been over a year since we ordered that. Where is that? Sabu, where is he? Some of the retro figures, where are they? Super 7, their hands aren't clean on this at all, and they're probably the worst offender. I absolutely love Super 7. There's a lot of people that hate Super 7. There's some people that love it, and there's very few in the middle. It seems like it's love-hate. I love Super 7 because they're bringing a lot of properties I absolutely love that we wouldn't have an action figure form without them. So I'm all in on Super 7. Yes, they're not the most posable figures, but I'm not playing with my figures. I'm putting them in a few poses, but they're displayed on a shelf, so it's okay for me. But I love all the toy lines they're doing, especially some of the deeper cut lines. But one thing that's always got deep in my craw with the Super 7 is the long wait times. They always say, hey, it's going to be a year, but sometimes that turns into 14 months. Sometimes that turns into two years. We'll never forget that Super 7 Thundercats debacle from, uh, gosh, did we finally get those earlier this year, I think it was? in like February after a year and a half, almost two year wait. Uh, it's one of those things I would say, hey, it's going to be a year or say, hey, it's going to be 14 months. It's going to be 18 months, whatever it may possibly be. And then deliver it at 12 months. Let's surprise the consumer. Uh, let's have some faith with that. Uh, but between Super 7, these retro lines, Chella being the biggest offender now, hopefully with Wrestling Trader, that does change. Zombie Sailor, another one we talked about earlier. Uh, just the wait times being longer and longer. And I understand it with COVID. I understand the shipping delays. I understand it more than probably a lot of people do because I live it in my day job every single day. But we can't promise something and say it's going to be here. You got to just say, okay, it, we're going to say a year, but I'm going to tell them 16 months, especially if I take their money up front. Uh, everybody's going to be happy if they get something four months earlier if they paid for it. They're going to be happy about that. But Let's be honest. I think it's everybody, all these companies just saying, yep, it's a year. Yep, it's a year. And that's just the easy round number to put it to. Let's be realistic. Put 14, 16 months. And if it comes in a year, hey, we're happy. We're good. We'll go with that. But the number three for me is the long wait for action figures. All right, we're at the number two spot in the countdown here. And number two spot is very similar to the number five spot. And once again, it is a canceled figure. This is a figure a lot of us were very, very excited to own. I luckily did pick one of these up. We even unboxed it on the channel. I'm an absolute wild man sometimes. Uh, but what are we talking about? We're talking about the RVD canceled chase figure. Yes, Rob Van Dam makes his triumphant return to the Elite line. Of course, we get the Tiger Stripe Edition as the regular version of RVT in the Elite line. But then we get a chase version, and it is the one with his Rising Sun singlet. Now, uh, the Rising Sun, I think a lot of us learned something in 2022, at least here uh, in the United States and probably elsewhere in the world, to be honest, uh, that the Rising Sun logo is offensive to many Asian countries, Korea and stuff, and I guess is looked at uh, like the Nazi swastika in a lot of places. Is just it does represent uh, tougher times. We'll call it tougher times uh, for a lot of people of the world. Now, I was totally oblivious to that. And like I said, I think a lot of other people were as well. Uh, and once again, RVD, I don't think he meant anything by that. I think he just thought it was a cool singlet back in the day. And he's a guy that's wrestled in Japan, as we all know. Uh, so that was canceled, and it was the Chase Edition. So it was just very disappointing to get an RVD, especially an iconic version of RVD canceled. Would have been nice if they could have found another singlet because let's be honest, he's had many singlets. They could have popped something in there, but I think there just wasn't enough time to get a change. So that's just the way it went. And it's just crazy to me that a company like Mattel, obviously Mattel isn't a little company. They are a big, big major player in the toy business that they don't have people checking on that stuff or, you know, legal, things like that. You just think they could have caught that much, much sooner, much earlier. Uh, but it is what it is at this point. But it is very disappointing as that was one I was really looking forward to. And like I said, I did pick this one up from the old action figure black market. Be careful there. You could lose some fingers if you're not careful. But I did pick up one of these earlier in the year. We did unbox it on the channel. So if you want to check that out, check that out uh, in my videos, my WWE Elite videos. But number two for me in the biggest disappointments of 2022 was the canceled RVD figure. All right, here we are. We're at the number one spot. My number one wrestling figure disappointment of 2022. Do you got your list together? Make sure you put it in the comments down below. And of course, if you like videos like this, make sure you do subscribe to the channel as every single Thursday, we're counting down top fives, top tens of certain things. And then every subscriber milestone, milestone that's when we do our top 10 countdowns. So check it out. And then still to come before the balance of the year is up, we got a ton of top five, top 10 best of toy lines. Everything we review on the channel, 
channel. We're going to do some top five, top 10 lists of those. So stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you like this very video. It helps out the channel, as you guys know. So without further ado, let's hit up number one. What is the number one disappointment of 2022 for me in wrestling figures? And there was no doubt in my mind when I started putting this list together, this was number one, and it stayed number one. And this better get fixed in 2023 or else it's going to be number one on the list next year. Yeah, there you go. I don't know what I can do about it, but uh, hopefully I'm bringing some light to it, and hopefully others are as well out there. But my number one disappointment for wrestling figures is action figure staining. Staining of the cloth goods on these action figures, on wrestling figures specifically. And I'm looking at you, Jazzwares. I'm pointing the finger at you the most, but Mattel, you're not totally uh, free of all this. As we do know, the Macho Man uh, Target exclusive Ultimate Edition, staining issues on that. We've had other issues over the last couple of years. Rick Rude being probably the biggest one with his uh, robe gate as well. But we've still seen some staining from Mattel. But it seems to be a little bit better for the most part, for the most part. But Jazzwares is really struggling, really struggling with this. And it's almost comical in some instances. And that being like the Young Bucks 2-pack, the Amazon exclusive Young Bucks 2-pack. These guys had the plastic protection pieces all over except the body where the shirt was. So they're protecting the hands, the forearms, things like that. But they're not protecting the shoulders and that kind of stuff. So they're all stained right out of the package. Unfortunately, the brand new Owen Hart figure. How long have we been waiting for an Owen Hart figure? Uh, many, many years. Well, this first one, unfortunately, starting to stain. Those people that buy that figure six months from now in package want to open it up. It's going to be a stained mess. CM Punk, his first figure back since he uh, left WWE, WWF way back in the day. We get staining on his figure. Uh, those are the big ones. And there's been many more from there. And then some guys that you know you come in with a sweatshirt or something like CM Punk well you put that on him it stains him so you're you're uh, having to do a little Sophie's choice do I leave him without all the goods that I want to put on my figures to display him or do I leave that stuff to the side what do I do I don't know you're just uh, stuck in the middle there so it is so disappointing that in this day and age they can't figure out uh, a way to make the cloth not stain and I love that Jazzwares tries to put plastic in from time to time but that does not help and that it looks just god awful that doesn't make a lot of sense takes away from in package collectors takes away from out of package collectors so there's got to be a way to figure out cloth and plastic especially in this day and age uh, it shouldn't be poly pocket style we've moved past that that should be used very rarely but we got to figure out a way for the cloth not to stain the figures or else this is just going to be uh totally terrible again next year this will be at the top of my list next year as well so number one for 2022, the biggest wrestling figure disappointment this year is the staining of action figures. So that's my number one. What is your number one? Put it in the comments down below. Put your list together, as I always say. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, turn on the old notification bell. Don't forget about the Patreon where you get videos like this earlier than traditional YouTube. Uh, you get bonus content, Q&As, all kinds of different stuff over there. And best of all, you do support the channel. You can also support the channel at ProWrestlingTees.com. Search Kyle Peterson. And don't forget to follow me on social media, SirPaul64 on Twitter, Instagram, the underscore Kyle underscore Peterson. So for the top five wrestling figure disappointments of 2022, I am Kyle. I'll see you guys all real soon.